Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is 12 inch PV Penis with another guide for Infinite Galaxy. If you guys are watching this right now, we are currently live and we go live every single day at zero UTC, also known as reset for those of you laymen out there. This video is going to be over campaign, what you should buy, how to get the furthest, and what ship you should invest for campaign. Hopping right into it, the very first thing that I'm going to suggest off the rip is that you invest in the Brontes. It's a pretty easy one, uh, something that people like to do is they like to invest a little bit in the Nemesis. It's something that you get early on, and it's a really strong flagship uniquely. So it's not really good in combat outside of that because it puts so much stock into the fact that the flagship is the strongest. However, in campaign specifically, it's pretty good. Although for the purposes of today, we're going to be talking about the Brontes because it's so strong. Uh, the Nemesis is viable-ish. Uh, I, I would very much stay away from the Hercules. As soon as you buy the Brontes... You know, as soon as you've unlocked it, you know, there's no real reason why you should be focusing on anything else. You want to make sure that you have as much gear as possible at the highest level that you can. So make sure, for example, uh, a green gear at level 7 might be better than a blue gear at level 4, but a purple gear at level 4 might be better than a green gear at level 7. So you want to see, like, what the best options for you are, and you want to stack all your weapons to match whatever weapon type you have. So, for example, my Brontes has a kinetic weapon, so I'm running all kinetic weapons. Another thing to note is when you're in the campaign, it's going to give you the option to summon your highest tier of ship to assist you, okay? Depending on what tier of ship you are, you're going to want to have it match your weapon. So for example, the Brontes has kinetics, and I have all kinetic weapons. So a tier 7 cruiser is going to give me kinetics. So this is something that I'd want to summon more of than not. However, back when I was tier 6, this gave me lasers. And although the Brontes buffs cruisers, it's not enough to justify not having kinetics. So in situations like that, I would generally try to summon uh, frigates, but they're a lot weaker. And so you really have to get a sense for when you want to do more damage and when you need the ships in front of you to tank damage for you. Whereas where would you want to tank damage for your ships and keep them alive for longer? Because cruisers are uh, 60 fleet points and you start out with having 120 all the way up to 180, right? So at uh, 1200 total reinforcement points, you can afford the 120 leadership that it takes to field four cruisers. This is significantly cheaper than if you had four sets of frigates, which would cost you 1600 leadership or reinforcement points. So although you'll end up doing more damage with the frigates, it's important to note when you're going to pull them out, because as soon as you reinforce, it might be more worth it to reinforce later when a certain amount of damage is decided so that you can hit the next wave with your frigates or if you know specifically how you're going to do it then you can summon the frigates then and not immediately because they just get blown up a lot of the time also their range is very short comparative to cruisers so generally you just want to be very cognizant of when you're dropping your ships however um especially in the case with tier six when you have uh, a laser cruiser, sometimes even in situations where cruisers should be better, the fact that your frigates have kinetics is good enough to sometimes just run them. Uh, once you get to tier seven and you're running the Brontes, you're basically you're basically done with the campaign. I, I mean, like I, I would I would give like a bunch of crazy tips, but it, once you hit tier seven and you have your Brontes at like rank five, you're just gonna blow through the entire campaign and you're done. When they release more campaign tips, uh, we can go through. But overall. Uh, the Brontes at rank 5 should just absolutely steamroll the campaign. So just make sure you're doing your events. So over here is the campaign shop. So let's go over what you should buy. So first of all, you should immediately buy any Brontes blueprints you see right until you unlock the Brontes. After you unlock the Brontes, you can consider going for the Prometheus. But more important than the Prometheus would be is if you saw a legendary blueprint down here. They cost 8,000. You should pick them up whenever you see them. If you have a lot of extra points, I would say... After you have an excess of 16,000, which is enough to buy 20 legendary blueprints, uh, you can start investing into the Prometheus. I definitely would not be buying any other purple blueprints simply because they're not as good as the Prometheus and there's no real reason to invest in them while you're already investing in the Brontes. Finally, here we're going to be covering some tips I have for uh, doing some of these levels. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is how to complete like just your standard level with the weapons uh, available to the Brontes. So the Brontes has a... AoE weapon, it has a strength weapon. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to AoE as many frigates as possible, and then you want to just pop your strength weapon, so you want it to have it on cooldown immediately. The faster you use it, and the faster you're getting value for it, obviously, the faster you can use it again, and you just want to hit as many waves as you can. Essentially, you're going to want to wait till every wave is coming in, and then you want to immediately bomb that with your AoE. 
So obviously I'm a little strong for this one. So you know, all the ships died before the next wave came in, but that's usually not how it works. Okay, over here you notice I'm a little far ahead of my wave. This is because you can end up tanking more uh, than you usually do, right? There's no reason for you to be at 100% HP if it only requires you to be at around 60%, right? So you can walk up, you can tank for your frigates, you can tank for your destroyers and take damage up until you're around 80% HP, right? They'll eat straight through your shields and they'll eat through a little bit of your health bar. However, that's all that health that you saved on the rest of your ships. On top of that, your shield ends up regening, so it's not a huge issue. There is no benefit to keeping yourself at 100% HP. However, you do have whatever HP you saved in other ships if you tank for them. So in uh, events like these, I would generally be summoning cruisers because I can keep my cruisers in the back line because all my front line is going to die. And then when my final ship comes in, which is this blue one that, over here, uh, you will get a final ship on your last wave. Depending on what ship you're using, depends on what ship will come and help you. However, you can stand behind that ship with your cruisers and let it tank and soak most of the damage. This is another campaign quest, and this is going to be when you're charging an enemy spaceport. Something to note that uh, these little turrets give a lot of value, so you'll find yourself with a ton of extra points. So if you want to summon something specific, like let's say cruisers, you can summon your cruisers, although they don't have the damage output of frigates, and you're going to find yourself with a lot of extra points, right? So right here, I can summon about two pieces of, of frigates, but by the time I get here, assuming I was leveled for this specific event, I would have probably like 1,200 by the time I got over here, right? And so I would have to uh, establish if I wanted 30 frigates that could tank for me and do a ton of damage, you know, if I want to destroy the spaceport, because the faster you destroy the spaceport, of course, then you get an extra 500 points for destroying the spaceport. And then you can summon more frigates that can help you clear it. So it's very important to note that when you are charging a station, frigates are sometimes better than cruisers because number one, like your ships back here are very slow. So when they're coming in, your cruisers are going to get targeted because you can't really stand behind yours and kill it within the time limit. Frigates, on the other hand, are going to tank for you. And so you can walk forward without really fear of dying. Although you're going to lose a lot of frigates, you also have a lot of points. Over here is another type of level. Uh, which is going to be like base defense and what you would want to use here is you'd want to use cruisers The reason why you'd want to use cruisers here rather than frigates is because frigates will get targeted by the ships going past Because a lot of their frigates actually won't end up targeting your turrets because their path is out of the range However, if you're running frigates, you are definitely going to get targeted um, Some other tips I would have for these stages would be if you notice sometimes you'll lock on to their biggest ship if you want to lock onto their biggest ship and keep yourself within range, obviously while well, not taking anywhere near as much damage as I did, killing that ship not only grants you 100 points, but is also a huge boon in terms of negating their damage, right? Because those big ships will be targeting your turrets the entire time, and so keeping them off of that would be very important. In these types of situations, remember you'd want to do cruisers and not frigates. Finally, this is going to be the last one you go into. This is going to have turrets behind you where they're going to bring in cruisers and they're just going to smack on those. And essentially you have to clear the front and then between waves, you have to go to the back and clear them, right? You cannot just clear the front and then be done with it. I believe there's also a version where they have a starport and turrets. However, that's a lot easier since you have so much more resources. So over here, you can see your turrets are starting to get hit by the cruisers. Um, this isn't the full amount of cruisers yet. Obviously, I'm over leveled for this, so my ships are going to absolutely murder this. But generally, what's going to happen is you're going to be struggling to fight these top ones. And then around this wave, you're going to walk over here. And then there's going to be more of their cruisers spawning in. Right? And so this wave of cruisers is going to get through it and will destroy your, your starport if you're not paying attention. So you'd walk back. Um, generally, uh, if you have your buff up, you know, you'd pop it here. You clear this really fast and you go out front and you, you, know, you try to make sure your starport doesn't go down. Uh, you can use your starport as like a tangible HP asset because it doesn't have to be past a certain amount of HP. It's just important to notice that sometimes frigates will just walk past you and smack it. Overall, those are the different level types. That's how I would do it. Those are the different ships that I would summon, which flagships I would focus on, and what I would buy from the campaign. If you guys enjoyed this content, be sure to drop a sub, a like, drop a little comment for me if you don't mind. And if you're looking to ask me questions, the best place to find me is the Discord in the description below. That's where I post notifications for when I'm going live and any updates if you know I'm not going live or maybe I'll do an extra event. If you guys are watching this right now, I'm actually currently live on YouTube. So come on over and check that out. We go live every single day at Reset or 00UTC. Have yourselves a great one. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. Goodbye.